Well, it is a fun way to make a difference in the lives of local pets. That's right. The 2022 Walk for Animals is one month away, and this year it's happening at a brand new location. And we are thrilled to be back partnering with the Animal Humane Society for the annual walk. Love it. And here to talk about the importance of the walk and how you can get involved uh, are Mary Tan and Ellie Smith from the Animal Humane Society. And we have three awfully adorable kittens that did not lose their mittens. It's going to be hard to focus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at cute kittens. Okay, so Ellie, uh, for people who aren't familiar with the Walk for Animals, tell us a little bit about what it is and where the money goes to. Yeah, so uh, like you mentioned, we're super excited to have it again in person. It's our largest fundraiser of the year, and we have thousands of animal lovers and their pets that visit us, you, normally at the Golden Valley Shelter. But this year, we're gonna be at the Minnesota State Fairgrounds, and all of the proceeds go to help our life-saving work that we do every single day for animals in our community. Some very important stuff. And what can people expect at the event? Yeah, so we have uh, gates open at 9 a.m. We have a small one mile walk at 10 a.m. And then uh, the walk is kind of a very fun part to pet see, but then we also have live music. We have vendors, partner booths, food trucks, and all sorts of fun things going until 1 p.m. Uh, and how, so this year is gonna be different. We know it's gonna be at the state fairgrounds yeah. and people can bring all kinds of animals. And this is yes. the crazy thing that I remembered. I mean, people were, yeah, they were walking their mm -hmm. cats and various, uh, tell me about some of the other animals that people might see. At this yeah, walk. so I know that we have a famous duck that is going to be coming to the Minnesota State Fairgrounds, which we're excited about. Um, there's been a turtle in the past. We've had goats, we've had mini horses. Song Pigs. Birds. What? Yeah. <laughs> we've had a chicken. <laughs> Cats and dogs, of course. Anything um, is welcome to come. If you don't have a pet, you can just go get a spider in your house and bring that. Oh gosh, <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, not spiders. <laughs> How about these uh, particular kittens that we're holding here? Tell us about them. They might be, so these are six weeks old. There's a litter of actually six of them. So we only mm -hmm. brought three today, but they'll be available for adoption in two, two weeks. weeks. And yeah, so whoever their new home is, their new parents, they might be bringing them. Yeah, oh, and they are way to show named off. <laughs> um, Daylily, Marigold, and Maple. Right, and cute. they they have two more weeks in foster yeah. because okay. um, they can't go to adoption until they're at least two pounds or mm -hmm. eight weeks, and yeah, then they'll cool. get uh, spay neutered really quickly, and then they'll be off to find a new home. So. Look for our website. And there's other kittens in this litter too, and they're absolutely adorable. I was just gonna ask if we were in kitten season officially. We're, we're heading into yes. kitten season. Okay. We're not quite in it, but um, kitten season is actually a really rough time for rescues and shelters because they are coming in left and right. And I wanna remind people, you know, if you have an outdoor cat especially, it's always best to keep them inside, but mm -hmm. spay and neuter your pet because when your cat is out carousing and it's not spayed or neutered, you know, a, a kitten can get pregnant at like six months. So, and you know, this mama, um, her name is Fern, she had six babies. So think about wow. that, like yeah, every right. cat. Multiplied mm -hmm. over and over and over. Right. So I'm glad you brought, you know, dogs tend to get maybe the, the spotlight um, and it's important to remember kittens and, but what is the situation now? I, I know for a while that the Humane Society uh, was kind of on a, took a little break uh, mm -hmm. and a lot of those kittens or, or animals went to other shelters. What would you say, like across the state, how is the situation? Or do we have more animals than um, than usual because of the pandemic? Um, well, I, you know, I think there was, um, especially when it comes to community cats, which are feral cats. We were during the pandemic, we weren't able to spay or neuter them, so we do have more um, pet. Uh, cat overpopulation out there. Um, but it's slowly getting back to normal. Um, at AHS, we uh, spay and neuter community cats. We're one of the few organizations that do. Um, and that is thanks to funding from donors for the, like for the Walk for Animals. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we, we always have that issue. And so it's, it's um, cats are still a problem in Minnesota with overpopulation. It's across the board, if you ask any rescue or shelter across the state. Dogs are a different story. Dogs tend to get more attention. Dogs tend to be, um, you know, cats, unfortunately, and I'm a cat person, they get considered to be second class pets. Like oh, they are be. not, they, and contrary to what people believe, they are highly trainable. Mm -hmm. You know, you can do so many things with cats and people just don't think that. 
And I know I've come on the show and said that many times before. <laughs> and I'm just, you know. Well, this one likes the, the microphone. Um, what <laughs> kinds of, you can make donations uh, mostly monetary, but you also, don't you take in other uh, items because things like uh, blankets and other things that you might need for the shelter? Yes, we take in all kinds of, you know, whether it's Crates. donating your time, being a volunteer, or whether it's um, donating blankets, towels, all those sorts of things, and, um, you know, pet products. And a lot of the times what we do with them is we work, we have an outreach program where we work with uh, pet owners who can't afford, you know, pet items, whether it's pet supplies or pet food. So you can donate it to us and then we do pass that on to, um, Mm -hmm. to pet shelf, mm -hmm. food shelves in different places like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like they're done with us. <laughs> <now>. <laughs> I'm not done with this one though. But we so appreciate it. How much are you hoping to raise? Do you, have a, do you put a number on it? We don't put a number on okay. it, but we're hoping to raise quite a bit. Um, this is our you know, first time having it in person in two years, so we're really hoping to make a big splash. And everyone can donate at walkforanimalsmn.org. You can register, donate, and fundraise. Yeah, and the reason why we're having it at the State Fair is to allow people to social distance. Yes. So if you're still mm -hmm. worried about COVID mm -hmm. and different things like that, we we have accommodations for you. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, my kitten is starting to chill out. He's Thank you for like, our okay. mood lift for the day. Very <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Ellie. I say bye. Thank you so much, and don't forget about all the cats and, and the dogs and all the animals. Uh, yes. They need some love. Spiders. And the cats. <laughs> right. Spiders are good. Yeah. Spiders are good. Spiders yeah. are not. They don't need us. Know, I when I <laughs> they're, go they're good. They're good to go. Okay. I like bring it outside because I can't stand to kill it. Okay. All right. They are. They can absolutely go outside of my house. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, show them the door. All right, the Animal Walk for Animals is happening Saturday, April 30th, as you heard, at the State Fairgrounds. To register and start fundraising now, you can head to walkforanimalsmin.org. And we'll see you there. For sure.